evening YouTube. So next instalment in the laser cutter update. So as of this evening um, I've fitted the stepper motors for the z-axis so there's a little stepper motor drive um, and linear rail for each corner of the bed. As you can see they look very nice. Um, got these as a job lot from China which meant I got 10 stepper motors extremely cheap however they come with very short leads so it's gonna be a, bit of a pain in the ass to wire them compared to the zap automation motors that come with that two meter cable. Um, never mind, save some cash. Um, the good news about having the bed uh, nearly wired up is at least I've got an elevated working surface and at least now you can see the laser focus or nearly in focus and um, the final bed will be about 10 mil higher than this um, the aluminium egg crate or honeycomb rather material that's arrived for that um, needs to be expanded and set into this frame so there is a slight recess in the bed that's designed to take that comfortably um, because there are four stepper motors for the z-axis um, I don't want to try and overload the Pololu drivers on the ramps board, so I have a, another cheap Chinese stepper driver that can take a fairly high current. That should be able to drive all four motors in sync without an issue. The other bit I was working on last night was the homing for the y-axis. So because I've gone for a dual belt drive arrangement, rather than the much more common single stepper with a rod across the back that joins for two belts, this allows, or my design, it does mean the axes can get out of sync, especially at the moment I've turned the motors off and you can see there's a, there's a reasonable amount of slop in one side of the axis. Now that's going to cock up the homing alignment um, in between jobs. So the solution I've got, um, actually I'll explain why I've done this. Two lightweight stepper motors driven by separate drivers mean um, I get a very compact arrangement along the back here, there's no need to try and squeeze a, another motor and rail system in the back. Um, it also means the motors themselves and the drivers are dirt cheap, fairly standard parts, um, but it does introduce this homing problem. So what we have on the two axes, on one side we have a micro switch, as you would normally find on a rat rat type machine. On the other side, i zoom in a little bit, what you can see, the little black dot hiding near the, um, yeah, camera focus doesn't work, excellent. So the little black dot just here is a linear hall effect sensor. And there's a little clump of magnets hiding under this bracket on the back of the um, carriage on that side. So what happens is when the axis homes, it first homes as per normal, um, as in normal Marlin firmware. So it will home against the micro switch. Then it will go through a calibration routine where it uh, very carefully homes the other side. So in G-code terms, let's move this uh, close to where it needs to be for homing. Oh. Let me turn the motors back on. Right. So one of the calibration settings that goes with this is to set the Hall Effect reading that represents the calibrated axis. Um, this is something you can adjust and save in the EEPROM. Um, so what I've been doing is taking micrometer readings from one side of the machine to the back of the X-Rail and the same on the other side and then recalibrating and homing um, using different hall settings until I get that very very precise. So the homing is accurate to within about a tenth of a millimetre or slightly better. Um, what we should be able to do now is home both axes. Um, unfortunately it's quite slow so we'll just have to wait a minute. So first it'll home the X, fairly normal. Then it's going to go back and home the Y. Um, now what it'll do when it gets back is it'll first home against the mic switch, do its little bouncing back again. And then what it's doing now, you can see on the screen here, um, it's just making very small adjustments. Now I deliberately screwed up the alignment, so it's going to take a while to seek. Um, also because there's quite a lot of noise on the hall sensor, this is a fairly slow iterative process. I can't currently think of a better way to do it, and I do need to improve the smoothing of the sensor values. So this is taking a while to converge down to as close to zero errors. Okay, there we go, fully aligned. Now, the next time we do a move, so if I do a just a very short move and then rehome. Rehoming once it's aligned is very quick. It just takes a couple of iterations depending on the amount of sensor noise until it's accurately homed. Um, the other thing I was going to show you is the Lisa Zhu pattern again. Um, this time running 
with the bed raised so you can at least see the laser beam moving itself around um, hard to see at the speed but the beam is staying very nicely centered nice and stable within the head so I'm quite happy with the optics arrangement a bit late now I'm gonna go to bed but tomorrow night's job is to wire up the z-axis get those working uh, design and fit micro switch bracket at one point um, then hopefully by Thursday the water cooling system should arrive you can fit that and fit the, the actual CO2 laser and hopefully by next week I'll have some cutting good night you